something else that is common on pilot wire systems are pilot isolation transformers, or PITs. These prevent any high voltages from leaving the boundary of the substation. Why do we get high voltages? Well, should we get any ground fault on the system, the fault current will flow through the faulted conductor into the ground. It then goes through the ground beneath the substation, up through the transformer ground connection, and back to the transformer neutral point. As per Ohm's law, we have the ground resistance, we have fault current flowing, therefore a voltage must be generated. In transmission substations, where we can have a fault current of 60,000 amps, this voltage rise can be hundreds of volts. This voltage is called ground potential rise, and all of the ground beneath the substation will rise to a similar high level. This can be extremely hazardous for anyone working inside the substation, as the magnitude of the voltage at their feet can be different to the voltage found and the metallic objects that they may be touching. To make the substation safe, we install a buried copper mesh across the full area inside the substation. This will provide defined multiple paths for the fault current and allow it to split evenly as it heads on to the neutral of the transformer and equalizes out the ground voltage rise across the substation. We then connect all of the metal objects inside the substation, including panels, street lamps, cabinets, and anything else metallic, to the ground system. This therefore makes it safe for personnel working inside the substation, as everything is now at the same ground potential voltage. The problem we have with pilot wires is that when these connect two substations together, one of the substations may have gone faulty, and have a ground potential of 600 volts, whilst on the remote end substation, the ground potential could be zero, and this voltage difference could be extremely hazardous. This is why we need pilot isolation transformers. These block the ground potential rise from being transferred to the pilot wires. Many of the old pilot wire protection systems use the copper telephone network to communicate between the two feeder ends as it was the only reliable way to do it, especially in rural areas. And while these are still seen today, they are fewer in number. The main reason for their demise, as over time the copper wires were replaced by the telecom operators, with fiber optic cables used instead. The telecom operators also had an issue with the touch voltages that were generated by the substations during fault conditions, which could affect their equipment even when pilot isolation transformers were used. 